finally, let me just close by talking about um, two other health defense systems that are intermingled together, and that's our microbiome responsible for gut health and our immune system. Now, both of these um, areas, uh, uh, you know, you may not have heard about angiogenesis, you may not know that much about stem cell therapy, but everybody's kind of heard about gut health and everybody's thought about immunity, um, uh, uh, you know, that's out there. Again, I've come at this really from a researcher's perspective and, and somebody who's worked in the biotech kind of world to try to improve medical treatments. I'm an internal medicine doc. I wanna show you, these are both actually interconnected. So first of all, the microbiome, 37 trillion healthy bacteria that are actually in our body, mostly in our gut. And they live sort of in our colon. And it turns out that if they live on the inside of the garden hose, in the wall of the garden hose is 70% uh, is of our immune system. And so literally these gut bacteria live next door through a thin wall uh, with to, to a, a majority of our immune system. The analogy I give is remember in college, if you lived with room in a, in a house, uh, in, a, in a bedroom for one college student had a thin wall to the, uh, the student next door, you could pound on the wall to ask uh, the, the, your roommate uh, what they what, what what kind of pizza they wanted to order, for example, and they could hear you. And that's what how bacteria talk to the immune system, and the immune system talk back to the bacteria. Very important concept because this is one of the ways that our gut microbiome influences our immunity, our inflammatory uh, system, and in addition, these bacteria influence our brain secretion of social hormones, our lipid metabolism, <clears throat> our ability to heal with growth factors, our stem cells, so many different aspects are, are influenced by our gut microbiome. This is one of the new frontiers of medicine that's gonna occupy um, researchers for at least another 50 years. It's gonna be get hotter and hotter and hotter as a field. We're just getting into it right now. And so, you know, for anybody who says, well, I've got the cure for gut, you know, for gut disturbance, I'm just telling you that the real truth in health is that we're just at the beginning um, of this whole new frontier to understand the microbiome. So three strategies that, that currently exist to support microbiome health defenses, give prebiotics, probiotics, and avoid things that can damage your microbiome. So here's some surprises. Kiwi is a good probiotic. It's got a lot of vitamin C, which is good for your um, uh, gut microbiome. It's also got a ton of fiber. Um, uh, and so this is a study out of Singapore where they actually wanted to um, test out if you just gave somebody two kiwis a day, what would actually happen? And if you measure the gut bacteria by looking at the poop, the stool, so this is actually fecal microbiome uh, uh, studies that are done classically now. Um, uh, it's actually a, a type of uh, research that, that's commonly done. Just eating two kiwis a day, not changing anything else, increase good health gut bacteria in 24 hours by 35%. And over the course of four days, a different bacteria grew by 17%. These bacteria produce short chain fatty acids that are lower inflammation, that help your cholesterol and lipids work better, that uh, improve your energy metabolism and actually help your gut secrete uh, mucus. So it doesn't take much to actually influence this. Um, uh, and it's really important. Um, uh, fermented foods like <clears throat> um, cabbages, uh, kimchi, uh, sauerkraut, yogurt, even some forms of cheese um, actually can add good bacteria into our gut. And even sourdough bread um, actually has a gut bacteria called Lactobacillus ruteri that can actually be helpful as well. In fact, this Lactobacillus ruteri um, in sourdough bread, we've been eating, humans have been eating this for so many hundreds of years that the actual bacteria, which originally came from the human gut has adapted to bread dough. Um, and now it has its own bread dough version of it. And it's been shown that Lactobacillus ruteri can actually lower, suppress the development of tumors in the breast. So again, another powerful way, and, and this is sort of, um, this is work that um, a colleague of uh, mine has done at MIT looking at this. So the question is, if you okay, you show me some bacteria in bread, when you bake the bread, you can actually kill the bacteria, right? Yes, that's correct. You kill the bacteria, but even the fragments of the bacteria still can act on the brain in this case and help um, the brain release oxytocin, which is a social hormone. This is the hormone you get when you see a friend, you give a hug to somebody, you give a kiss. It's also the hormone that the brain releases during orgasm. And so again, powerful um, concept that the gut bacteria is, is useful and even the fragments of the gut bacteria can be helpful. And this is actually showing um, the oxytocin um, in people that are given lactobacillus ruteri, but even if the bacteria um, are, are, are sheared apart, it still works. So that's really quite an amazing thing. Lots of foods that beneficially affect the microbiome. Um, at this point, let me also say, 
that lots of things can affect the microbiome in a negative way. The ones that I would actually tell you, red meat um, and process, uh, uh, processed meats, uh, uh, actually with lots of preservatives and chemicals can damage the microbiome. Um, artificial sweeteners actually been shown to damage the microbiome as quickly as 24 hours after you have a diet soda, your microbiome can change in a negative way. And ultra processed foods, stuff in a box, the, the ingredients which are hard to read, also been shown to damage the microbiome as well. So things that you've heard about, but now I'm giving you a different, uh, a, a, a different perspective and to understand why that's actually so. So now, how is the microbiome connected to the immune system and how do we know that it actually works? Well, it turns out that President Jimmy Carter, former President Jimmy Carter, the oldest living president, actually after his presidency, wound up actually building houses, Habitat for Humanity in, in Georgia under the hot Georgian sun. He got melanoma and eventually that melanoma had spread to his liver and his brain. Now for anybody, that would actually be a terminal diagnosis. It's unsurvivable um, to have melanoma spread to your brain. However, as he was in his 90s and this was happening to him, he wound up getting into a clinical trial of an immunotherapy. And an immunotherapy is a cancer therapy that doesn't kill the cancer directly, but it rips the cloak off of, of a tumor so that your immune system, or in President Carter's case, his 90-year-old immune system, could find that tumor. So even if you're 90, your, 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 um, uh, your immune system is powerful enough to find and destroy cancers. And after he got that treatment, he had a complete response, and he's still alive today with absolutely no sign of cancer. He had written his obituary and then ripped it up. So this is not President Carter, but this is the, the kind of thing where you'd have metastatic cancer before treatment in the red circle and after an immunotherapy. Um, uh, there's no chemo here. Um, the only thing that happened is that the, the treatment actually ripped the cloak off of the, um, uh, of the tumor so that uh, uh, your immune system can find it and destroy it. Like, it. like I told you, we all have microscopic tumors. The reason they don't get harm, they're not harmful is because our immune system will eventually wipe them out. We can actually prompt the body to do this. This is biotech um, uh, immunotherapy. Now, it turns out not everybody responds that way. And for a long time, we had, didn't really know what made somebody respond versus what made somebody not respond. It turns out the gut microbiome, absolutely critical. If you have the right gut bacteria, you can respond to immunotherapy. If you don't have the right bacteria in your gut, you won't respond because your immune system isn't being prompted by the right bacteria. And by not responding, you could have a really bad outcome. And this was done by my colleague, Dr. Lawrence Zitvogel um, uh, out of uh, Paris. And she studied 200 uh, patients with cancer who were getting treated with immunotherapy and then tried to look at all the differences. And the only difference that was found, meaningful difference that was found was one bacteria in the gut microbiome. And that gut bacteria is called Acromancia mucinophila, Acromancia mucinophila. This bacteria, when it's present, talks to the immune system and prompts it and enables it to destroy cancer. And it's very easy to get rid of this bacteria. Um, if you take a, a Z pack, for example, to treat bronchitis, that's enough to actually wipe out that bacteria. So how do you actually build it back? Because you can't eat that as a probiotic. The only way you can get Acromancia is with food. It turns out pomegranates and cranberries help your gut secrete mucus that that bacteria likes to go to. They, this food, pomegranate and cranberries and conquered grapes actually are like the fertilizer that helps this bacteria grow uh, back up. So this has now been published in lots of different um, journals. Dietary uh, factors can improve acromancia, which, can, uh, which is an important um, uh, bacteria uh, that talks to your immune system that helps cancer uh, immunotherapy go. And this is basically, if you were to look at the cells, you have um, some pomegranate, influences the mucus, the bacteria, the microbiome grow, influences the, the immune system. And if you're getting a, if immunotherapy in a bag, which is a, it's, a, it's hung up like a bag, um, uh, and it gets in there, that immunotherapy is going to allow those immune cells to actually find the cancer and destroy it. Why am I showing you this? Because that bag of immunotherapy belonged to my mother who actually had metastatic endometrial cancer spread throughout the body, uh, really a terminal type of situation normally. And what we were able to do is get her, find the smoking guns um, that would allow her to get the immunotherapy, get the immunotherapy. And then we gave her pomegranate, we gave her cranberries um, in order to be able to get that gut mucus, acromancia growing, and she was a complete responder. And so all of the cancer was gone. She's alive to this day, doing very, very well with no evidence of cancer. So. 
I never thought in my career I would actually ever see this kind of progress happening in cancer. And I never imagined that I'd be able to actually apply that to my own mother. And I never imagined that food, diet, nutrition, food as medicine would actually be helpful as well. Now that wasn't food or medicine, that was food and medicine. And that's actually an important concept because you know a lot of people say, well, eh, never mind medicine. It's really about um, uh, natural stuff. I'm telling you as a medical doctor who's involved with biotechnology, we can combine food and medicine together. It's, these are tools in a toolbox. One isn't better than the other. They're all things that we should actually be using in thinking about it. So we have vaccines now against COVID and we now know that foods are actually important as well. Now, let me just give you a little bit of knowledge about or info, share with some information about what I, I learned in terms of my knowledge about food and how it relates to COVID. Um, well, first of all, we know that foods can make vaccines work better and everybody's getting a vaccine these days because that's how we get to the light at the end of the tunnel. Turns out studies have been done for influenza uh, vaccines. This is not a COVID vaccine, but eating broccoli sprouts can actually improve the, uh, the uh, performance of a vaccine. Two cups of broccoli sprouts a day and a shake in a healthy volunteer getting a flu vaccine can increase your response of your immune cells by 22 times. It's the only difference compared to a placebo. And when you actually look for the flu virus um, in those shake uh, sprout uh, shake eaters for Buckley sprouts, they almost had no um, virus left in their nose when you're actually swabbing the nose. So very, very important, this idea of food that might be able to enhance vaccine responses. That's an area of research that uh, uh, is actually underway. This is also showing an impact on food on COVID itself. This was actually published um, uh, in July of 2020, looking at um, uh, 900 patients um, that all um, were normally healthy. And then they went on to follow them uh, to see uh, whether which ones are gonna develop COVID. And they've managed to measure their blood, their stool, the, the poop to look for the microbiome. And they also got what they ate. And so what they found is that the people who actually wound up not getting COVID had more blood level of a natural virus killer called interferon gamma. Those people who had more interferon gamma had a natural bacteria, uh, a couple of natural bacteria in the gut microbiome, lactobacillus and ruminococcus, two bacteria that were found in elevated uh, at higher levels in people who made the natural virus killer. And who actually had the lactobacillus and ruminococcus, those healthy gut bacteria? People who ate uh, or drank more tea green tea or black tea or ate more seafood. So again, this was sort of real time, real in the middle of the pandemic, trying to use these same tools to try to tease apart um, what was actually going on uh, in the body and how do you connect it to the microbiome, which is the defense system, uh, the immune system, interferon gamma, and how does that connect to food uh, as well? So lots of really interesting things um, uh, still to be done in this area of food as medicine. How do you actually, um, uh, so again, interferon gamma, was the protectant, the virus killer, lactobacillus was one of the healthy bacteria. T, um, EGCG, which is a catechin found in tea, green tea or black tea they found uh, was one of them. Um, uh, and then also um, uh, looking at uh, seafood as well. So I'll just close um, with this quote from Hippocrates, since I started with Hippocrates, who did say this. And what he wrote was that natural forces within us are the true healers of disease. And if we knew that thousands of years ago, we're now quite sure of that now because what we know is that the body is hardwired with our health defense systems are born with from, from the time we emerge on this planet to our very last breath, these five health defense systems, angiogenesis, stem cells, microbiome, DNA protection, and our immune systems are firing in all cylinders, helping us resist disease. And now we're beginning to do the research using food to find food as medicine to look for how foods activate our health defenses. 